hello and welcome. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of Observer Research Foundation and Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation, uh, we are uh, uh, we have great pleasure in welcoming you all to this very special dialogue that we are conducting today. Uh, Taiwan, India, and the Indo-Pacific order, and it focuses on current trends and future possibilities. Uh, this is a dialogue uh, that is increasingly uh, acquiring salience in the in the context in which uh, we are operating today, in the structural context, in the regional context, and in the larger global context, which is uh, you know where we are looking at a number of our assumptions about the global order falling by the wayside. So Taiwan and India, which shared a, a, a similar perception about a rules-based order, inclusiveness, transparency, uh, and strategic autonomy in decision making, uh, are increasingly looking at each other. Uh, and and this is a this is a relationship that has not been really uh, studied well, and uh, and really has not uh, been engaged with in the manner that perhaps the potential uh, uh, of which it signifies. So I think uh, with this dialogue uh, and with greater engagement between uh, the think tanks uh, between Taiwan and India, the academics, uh, you know, as well as the policymakers, we look forward to enhancing our understanding of each other and their strategic priorities. So with that in mind, this, uh, you know, uh, today's um, uh, few hours uh, we have created, constructed in the hope that we can enhance the quality of the debate on this issue and we can take this conversation forward in a manner that uh, that perhaps uh, is deserving of this very very important partnership uh, so today after this introductory se uh, session in which uh, we are very privileged to have the director general of india taipei association as well as the representative of the taipei economic and cultural center india uh, we will we will uh, dig deep into two important issues that i think are highlighted in the uh, in the program itself uh, 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 with you know current trends and future possibilities and i think first we will look at where the where the uh, taiwanese and indian uh, uh, understanding of the emerging indo pacific order converges and in the second one we will look at specific issue areas like trade investment technology and health before in the in the last part looking at the way forward uh, so it's a privilege uh, once again to be able to host a distinguished set of speakers uh, policy makers uh, to this dialogue and with that let me hand over the proceedings of this first inaugural session to Michael Xiao, Chairman of Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation. Michael, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Pang. Greetings from the Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation. I welcome you all to the discussion on India-Taiwan relations and the evolving Indo-Pacific dynamics. At the outset, let me express my gratitude to Professor Pang and to the ORF, our partner for today's virtual event for this collaboration on a very important and timely topic. I would like to, I also would like to uh, extend my congratulations on India's seven, fifth years, 75 years of independence. Taiwan-India relations have gone tremendously over the past few years and have achieved several milestones. The year 2020 was a happy reminder that the warmth is witnessed at the full side. There are many convergences between India and Taiwan. One of the most important one is that both are advocates and, pro and strong proponents of a rule-based order in the Indo-Pacific. While India is an important stakeholder and at the center of, of the Indo-Pacific construct, Taiwan has assumed strategic importance in the region and have been a crucial player in the global supply chain networks. The two countries are among the strongest su supporters of the freedom of freedom and democracy. If there is any lesson that we can we could learn from the ongoing pandemic is that the cooperation between countries can no longer be confined to the traditional areas of security and commerce. When the world is grappling with the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic, both India and Taiwan have come forward 
to help other countries in need. India with his vaccine donation drive and Taiwan with his COVID-19 diplomacy proved beyond doubt that the two countries are responsible stakeholders in the Indo-Pacific. In the beginning of this year, India, that is fam famously known as the pharmacy of the world, initiated its vaccine donation drive, officially called as vaccine matri vaccine friendship, and has provided 10.7 million made in Thai India vaccines to seven uh, 47 countries as grants and another 19.8 millions under the COVID facilities. India has also commercially exported 35.7 million vaccines to 26 countries. Taiwan too have been able to help several countries by donating necessary medical supplies, including masks and personal protective equipment. Last year, it donated more than 50 million masks to countries across the world. Taiwan has also been able to minimize the COVID-19 at, at home from, at, the, at home again, at, at with a spend three months from 240 domestic cases to on May 19 to just six cases yesterday, August 18. The, case, the cases have gone down significantly. Nevertheless, no one is safe until everyone is safe. The struggle to fight the spread of the pandemic while also finding a, a equitable vaccine solution has been a challenge for the international community. Again, a reminder to us that the COVID-19 pandemic is not everywhere, anywhere close to getting over. It is not going to be the last pandemic for us either. Ensuring greater cooperation among the like-minded countries of the Indo-Pacific to deal with the COVID-19 and other challenges is the key to achieve to, to achieve an inclusive and transparent rule-based order. Inclusivity, inclusivity, and commitment to a rule-based order is a central to both India and Taiwan's foreign policy. There is no doubt that India is an important partner for Taiwan and under President Tsai's Tsai Ing-wen's administration. The relationship has come to the a long way, has come to a long way. In 2016, Ta Professor President Tsai introduced the new Southbound policy and India become the key focus country for Taiwan. Taiwan's outreach toward India has significantly improved. The new Southbound policy has completed five years of its existence. And one of the very important outcomes is the extended cooperation between India and Taiwan in a wide range of areas from commerce to culture to education strong bond between the people of India and Taiwan is an example of this context. The recently concluded celebration of India's Independence Day in Taiwan and the reception and the coverage it has got in both India and Taiwan media is a testimony of, of growing people-to-people -people ties between India and Taiwan. Now that we in Taiwan are taking stock of the policy it is only natural for Taiwan to also take stock of its relations, relations with India, a very important partner in the Indo-Pacific region. The strategic circle in Taiwan is also happy to note that India's at East policy under the able leadership of India's Prime Minister Modi has become a great success. There is a lot of synergy and the scope for greater cooperation between our New Southbound policy and India's at East policy. To inaugurate this virtual conference, we have two special guests with us today. Mr. Das, 
Director General, Indian Taipei Association, and Mr. De, Taiwan's representative to India. Our two distinguished guests have all have had illustrious careers in their respective ministries in India and Taiwan. Both took charge of only one year, but have done have done significant work to strengthen economic, cultural, and people-to-people ties between our two countries in such a short span of time. Congratulations. Great progress has been made under, under this tenure of Mr. Das and Mr. Gary. To, in, to inaugurate our dialogue and take the discussion forward, it is my pleasure and honor to invite Mr. Das, Director General India Taipei Association, to give his remarks first. Mr. Das. Thank you, Chairman uh, Xiao. Dr. Xiao from Taiwan Asia Exhibition. I was one that uh, I talked about the culture of the Taipei and culture sector and participants at today's dialogue. I thank the organizers for inviting me today to your discussion and to share my thoughts in this inaugural session. I appreciate the role that the TAEF has played in the last three years, I believe, uh, in promoting civil society linkages with India as part of its broader mandate of cultural and civil society linkages with India. <coughs> I am also particularly glad to see that the ORF, which is a premier Indian think tank, is now taking a keener interest in Taiwan affairs. I've always believed that think tanks in India and Taiwan can act as a good intermediary to nurture in their respective constituencies a better and wider appreciation of each other by engaging more frequently and by collaborating more directly. They can effectively bridge the information gap that has been created by the absence of formal channels of exchanges. The need for someone to play this bridging role is today more urgent than ever before. As the engagement between our businesses, between our students, scientists, and the common public is beginning to take off. I hope that this will not be a one-off event, but will start a process of prolonged engagement and mutual discovery among a larger cohort of thinkers and opinion makers, both in India and in Taiwan. Investing in understanding and discovering each other makes great sense. As an early industrializer in Asia, as an irreplaceable constituent of the global supply chains that uh, uh, my previous speakers have mentioned, as a major source of savings and outbound investment, and also as a technologist or power. Taiwan has a particularly valuable role to play for India's post-COVID economic resurgence and for our domestic transformation. Prime Minister Modi's calls for a self-reliant India or Atman Nirbhar Bharat in this new and post-globalization environment, if you will, aptly reflects the urgency of smartly and carefully recalibrating our economic and technology engagement with the outside world. The structure of Taiwan's economy, its outsized external orientation, and the distinctive modus operandi of the Taiwanese businesses, predominantly operate abroad, make it potentially one of our most consequential partners for realizing the self-reliance objectives and our Make in India goals. Taiwan's long-term economic dynamism and the continued growth of Taiwan's businesses also hinge on a more active and a more meaningful engagement with a large, growing, and young and dynamic market like India. Taiwan's hardware skills, when matched with India's software capability, Taiwan's cutting-edge technology, when combined with India's ability for frugal innovation, Taiwan's 
vibrant startup ecosystem when integrated with India's large startup base, Taiwan's pioneering deployment of precision medicine and AI-assisted healthcare when supplemented by India's enormous medical knowledge base and manpower, can in fact define the very nature of post-COVID digital and data-driven economy in the world and bring enormous benefits to both sides in the process. I'm happy that some of these themes are being picked up by your organization today and discussed uh, uh, in a deep dive. These are, of course, some of the many areas of potential. But how far have we tapped this potential? I'm afraid not very much, although uh, Chairman Xiao was kind enough to record many uh, positive developments. What I can say is that we have been scratching the surface for some time now, but probably right now we are scratching the surface more purpose. Some good beginning has been made in attracting Taiwan's top electronics and top ICT manufacturers to India. There has also been a nearly threefold jump in the number of Indian students enrolled in Taiwan's higher educational institutions in the last three or four years. The challenge of COVID-19 pandemic, something that uh, uh, Chairman Xiao also mentioned, has in fact accelerated uh, India-Taiwan health cooperation, ranging from traditional medicine to digital <coughs> application and pandemic management. Our think tanks are now beginning to interact more frequently, like today, even if it is virtual. I hope once the pandemic is under control, we can tempt more Taiwanese travelers who rank among the most widely traveled globally to come and discover the beauty and diversity of India. In short, the agenda is very rich, very interesting, and expanding at a big uh, pace. This is indeed at, as it should be between two peoples who are sharing the same geography, a geography that we call the Indo-Pacific and a geography that reflects the theme of today's discussion. Just as Taiwan is seeking to know better the new southbound policy countries, India has sought to understand and to assimilate better with the East through our practice policy, which was previously uh, Lucas policy. So for a period of three decades, we have tried to do this assimilation. As a result, today, India is connected with the East Asia region through deep and extensive linkages, be it in trade, services, investment, travel, occupation, shipping, resources, connectivity, politics, symmetry, maritime security, naval cooperation, natural disasters, you name it. Perhaps more than with any other part of the world. India's geographical position as a bridge between the Indian and the Pacific Oceans makes Indo-Pacific India's natural home. India's articulation of its own and unique idea of Indo-Pacific has not only expanded its footprint, but also elevated it to a vision that speaks to a truly free, open, peaceful, and prosperous Indo-Pacific. I'm sure that today's discussion will help our Taiwanese friends understand India's perspective on the Indo-Pacific better, and for the Indian and Taiwan friends to jointly identify areas in which our interests converge. I look forward to hearing your assessments and your recommendations in due course. With these words, I wish to congratulate the organizers on today's initiative and wish you a very productive deliberations. Thank you so much. Thank you for your insightful <coughs> remarks, Ambassador, Ambassador Gas. and hope we can soon to see each other to talk about our future corporations more closely. Now, let me invite Representative Ge Baoxuan for his remarks. So, Ambassador Ge, it's your turn now. Thank you, uh, Chairman Xiao, Professor Pant, uh, my partner, Ambassador Das, uh, Dr. Yang, Dr. Liu, other colleagues and friends, namaste. It's a great pleasure for me to be here to join you in this event co-organized by the uh, Observer Research Foundation and the Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation. I happen to be uh, uh, 
board director before I came to India. So I'm uh, happy to see my, my colleagues here. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, every year, both the ORF and the TAEF host their flagship conferences, uh, namely the Racina Dialogue and the USAID Forum, with a common aim in mind, uh, fostering dialogues among various stakeholders and exploring opportunities for cooperation towards global commons. Today's event, I'm sure, will strive to do the same in the context of the Indo-Pacific region. With the COVID-19 pandemic continuing to wreak havoc in the global economy, it's a welcoming sign that the court held consultations at the senior official level uh, not long ago to seek to build down the and the implement the historic discussions at the inaugural leaders summit this past March. Issues being consulted include the ways to end the pandemic, to promote economic recovery, to support countries vulnerable to coercive actions in the region, as well as the importance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. To be sure, the global the goal of maintaining peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait is now shared by the international community, as evidenced in the US-Japan Joint Leaders Statement released in April, the Carbis Bay Communique of the G7 Summit, and the Brussels Summit Communique of NATO, both issued in, in June. In effect, what this has manifested is that the fortunes of Taiwan and the Taiwan Strait are closely linked to the prosperity of the Indo-Pacific region and the wider world. Like India, Taiwan is an integral and indispensable stakeholder in the free and open Indo-Pacific region. Both countries share core values of freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. While we are continuing to strengthen ties with India under our new South policy, as uh, Chairman Shah just mentioned, India is building connections with its eastern neighbors through its Act East policy. It's well known that these two policies are complementary and can be linked to make greater contributions to a free, open, and resilient Indo-Pacific region. Indeed, Taiwan and India have over the years developed a unique value, which is a surplus of trust and friendship. In April this year, the Ministry of External Affairs of India posted on Twitter a message of condolences regarding a fatal train crash in Taiwan, which is the first time the Indian government has issued a statement of, of, of comfort to Taiwan since 1995, when the two sides exchanged office. Further, in May, alongside the selection of 250 lawmakers from 17 countries in this region, India's members of parliament, Sri Suji Kumar and Sri Lalo Sangha, joined the founding ceremony of the Formosa Club in the Pacific in a show to support for advancing cooperation in the post-COVID era. Taiwan, for its part, as it does for any country in, in need, has spared no effort to provide batches of oxygen concentrators and cylinders to India when the latter was confronted with the second COVID wave. Our strong bonds were also highlighted when Diwali was celebrated in November last year for the first time at the Taipei Guest House. As vibrant democracies with strong motivations to safeguard a rule-based international order, Taiwan and India should continue to deepen bilateral discussions and cooperation on issues of mutual benefits, such as regional security, science and technology, trade investment, in addition to education, talent, cultivation, and Mandarin language learning. In closing, I wish today's event a great success and a fine, a fine beginning of more regular dialogues amongst academics and policymakers on both sides in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Gerk. Uh, we could not have asked for better, for a better start to our have a day virtual dialogue, where we will have the privilege to listen to the domain experts to talk about several aspects of the Indian Taiwan relations. To conclude this inaugural session, I would like to invite my colleague, Dr. Alan Yang, exec Executive Director of the, our foundation, to say a few words before we move to the first session on the control of the emerging Indo-Pacific. So, Alan Yang, and your turn. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Chairperson Xiao. Uh, Director and Professor Pan, 
Director General Das and Ambassador Ge. I'm delighted to join this session and also to act the role of the vote of thanks. And this is the first time I learned from my colleague Sana. And thank you for your encouraging remark. <clears throat> and also without your kind support, today's dialogue would not be possible. My special thank goes to both Professor Penn for the kind support and also to my colleague, Dr. Sana Hashmi, the visiting fellow of Taiwan Asia Asian Foundation to facilitate our dialogue and make it possible. <clears throat> uh, from our end, we do look forward to continue the dialogue and also exchange views with friends in OIF. So I would say that this today's dialogue will not be the one shot event. We do think to extend our collaboration with uh, ORF through a more closer institutional tie. And it is, it will be based upon our shared interest and also common concern. So finally, once again, I would like to thank uh, Director General Das and Ambassador Gov for attending today's dialogue and share your insight with us. It's very meaningful and also encouraging. As uh, as a think tanker in Taiwan, we have been enjoying the dialogue and also exchanging view almost weekly with our friends in India. And we learn the updates and also the regional dynamics from the perspective of India and also South Asian region. That will be very uh, beneficial to not only Taiwan, but also to our friends in India and also to the decision maker for both country. So without further ado, I will stop here and thank you all for the kind support and also for attending today's dialogue. Thank you.